We need to look at our feet. They're the first point of contact with the ground, so we want to make sure it's a strong one. Um, you want to make sure you've got your big toes engaged and that your weight is on the outer edge of your feet. Um, you might have flat feet and that's fine, but you want to make sure that you're not exacerbating that. So really push out slightly and make sure that everything is aligned. Next, you're going to Anchor your weight down into your heels. You can see as soon as I do that, my hips already start to go back a little bit and my knees bend a little bit. And so it's all heading in the right direction for a strong and powerful squat. Next, I give my knees a little bend. There are very few times where we want our knees fully locked out um, in fitness and certainly in jujitsu. So it's good practice to always keep a little bend in the knees, but it also gives us a chance to check in with where our knees naturally want to drift. Uh, it's very common for the knees to end up drifting inwards. Even without any movement, they can end up here, and that's not an efficient or safe position. So I'm going to drive those knees out, make sure they stay out over the toes. If you look down and your knees are inside your big toes, you need to just... Imagine you've got a block or something. You can grab a block if you've got one at home, a block or a foam roller or a few pillows um, to keep that little distance in between the knees and, and get the right muscles working. Um, next, we want to check in with the hips. Uh, we want to make sure that they're sitting nice and heavy. They're our prime move, mover in this movement. Um, so we want them to be ready to go in the right position. So we don't want our hips directly over our um, feet, we want them slightly back. Um, by adjusting your feet in the first place, having that little bend in the knees and then making sure your weight is in the heels, your hips are gonna be in the right kind of position. Uh, you also wanna just make sure everything is level and symmetrical. So it's very easy to adjust yourself, especially if you don't have a mirror and end up with one foot pointing out, and that's very common. That's fine, but just make sure you're bringing everything back in line. You want to line your big toes up, like I said, the knees. And then with the hips, it's easy to end up with a hip twisted. Um, we have a lot of tightness in our backs and, and in our ribs. So just imagine you've got a pair of headlights on the front of your hips and you want them facing forward the whole time. Next, we want to just make sure we've created a bit of length in the spine. So we don't want to be here with our tailbone tucked under. We don't want to be hyperextended with our lower back all crunched up and no control through the ribs. So we're just going to create some length with our hips heavy and lift the chest, but without pushing the chest forward. So we're just lifting, we're lengthening the spine, and we're keeping as much openness in the front of the hips as we can. Next, we're going to start to move. A lot of things can shift when we start to move. I'll talk you through them. So we're going to push our hips back. I'd encourage you to think of a squat as a backwards motion, not a downwards motion, because if I go straight down, I end up here with my heels off the ground, my knees past my toes, my tailbone tucked under, and my shoulders slumped. If I push my hips back, my knees stay where they are, I've still got some engagement through the core, I've still got my shoulders back, and my chest lifted. Then I unfold by pushing my hips back under me. So notice I'm not thrusting my hips forward and ending up in this locked out hyperextended position. I'm just lifting, I'm driving my hips up underneath my shoulders, keeping my shoulders nice and relaxed. And then I'm ready to go again because nothing else has shifted. If you end up doing this, your weight goes all over the place. So you really wanna be conscious of driving your hips back and then unfolding. I want you to really focus on your hips in this movement, not your knees. Everyone thinks about bending their knees, but then this happens. It turns into a downwards motion. Think about pushing your hips back. Your knees have to bend. So once you've practiced that, 
I want you to take your attention to your abs, your core, um, and your lower back. So as I've already mentioned, you definitely don't want any pinching in the lower back. It's very easy um, to do. Some of us have a predisposition towards it. So just make sure you're not at that end range at any point. Just create a little bit more control through the front of your core, um, and that will keep your spine protected. And just make sure you don't end up tucking your tailbone under. So nice and long. You want to think about having some length um, in your lower abs, in the front of your hips. So it's easy to end up folded over your thighs. Um, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and sometimes it's necessary if you've got a heavy bar on your back. But ideally, we want to be in a more upright position. If that means you have to reduce your range, that's far better than ending up in a really deep squat with no control and no power. Hi everyone, I hope you found the squat instructional useful. Uh, now I want to cover the plank and the press up. So like with the squat, we're going to start by talking about our points of contact, um, then the links in the chain, and then how to keep focused when you're moving. So points of contact, hands and feet. So for your hands, First thing to do is make sure they are underneath your shoulders. It's very easy to end up with them out ahead of you, uh, especially once we've spent a bit of time in the position and we're checking on our knees and we're checking on our hips and we end up here. So always make sure they stay underneath your shoulders. Width-wise, normally about shoulder width or slightly wider um, is the sweet spot for everyone, but you can play around and see where you feel more comfortable. It might also depend on whether you're just doing planks or whether you're doing press up. We want to make sure we're using all of our strengths. So that means using the whole hand and also the fingers. Um, again, if your hands are too far ahead of you, you have no choice. You're only using the heel of your hand. If they're underneath you, you can use your fingers. So I spread my fingers wide and I sort of rock my weight onto my hands and then I engage the fingers like a sort of suction pad. Um, might not feel like you have a huge amount of strength through your hands right now, but if you keep doing this, you will get stronger hands and wrists as well. Then for your feet, obviously you're up on the balls of your feet, but you're going to push away on your heels. So. You don't want idle feet. Again, like a lot of stuff we do in jiu-jitsu, we talk about active feet. So you want to be pushing away. You push the ball, the ball of the foot down into the ground and you extend the heel away from you. Um, that strains out your legs and it keeps you nice and strong. So you've got your two ends of the position are strong. Next, we've got our hinge point, our big, heavy hips um, that can easily end up dropping down and put a lot of weight on our back or they rise up and they take all of the work out of the movement. So we want to keep them in line with the shoulders. We want to keep them in line with the shoulders, but we also want to make sure they're facing the right direction. So again, you take your headlights on your hips, you face them directly down into the ground. So you don't want them facing up, you don't want them facing towards your toes, you want them facing towards the ground. Um, it can be helpful for this to put up on the pelvic floor, um, so that feeling like when you're uh, trying not to pee, and that engages your deep core muscles. You also might want to give the glutes a little bit of a squeeze. So when you're in this position, you're pushing away, you're sort of hugging the feet in together, hugging the knees in together. You can give the glutes a little bit of a squeeze, pull up on the pelvic floor. And then finally, you can imagine, again, a sort of tight rope, um, or a piece of tape across your hip bones. It's just sort of helping to lengthen and engage everything in between the hip bones. The last thing we need to pay attention to is our shoulder position. Um, a lot of people come out of planks early because their shoulders get tired. Um, so if you're in the right position and you're 
abs are doing a lot of the work, there shouldn't be too much tension tension in the shoulders. Uh, you want to make sure you're not hanging your head down because that will stretch out the upper back and won't allow you to use it properly. So you give yourself a double chin. You push the back of your head back so that you don't end up with your chin jutting forward. We spend a lot of time at screens, at computers, with our chins jutted forward, so we're just gonna reverse that in a double chin. And that keeps our neck neutral, keeps our upper back in line. And then finally, I'm gonna give the elbows a hug inwards and get actively push away on the ground. So you can see front on a little bit better how much stronger that makes the movement. If I'm in my plank and I'm sort of looking forward, you can see my shoulders up around my ears. So I shrug my shoulders back, give myself a double chin, then I hug the elbows in and then I'm in a much better position to hold this plank. So exactly the same principles if you're on your elbows, doing an elbow plank. You want to make sure you want to get your elbows underneath your shoulders, feet strong, pushing the heels back, hips facing straight down. Um, pelvic floor engaged, glutes slightly squeezed, elbows hugging inwards. I know that on the floor they can't move, but they're still hugging in towards each other. Shrug the shoulders back, double chin, and then I can hold this position for a little while. Once you've got your setup strong, once your abs and your back and your core and your legs and your arms and your shoulders are doing all the work, um, it becomes very easy to do a press up because a press up is just a moving plank. Um, a lot of the struggle with people with press ups is their hands are too wide or they're too narrow, forcing their elbows out, which puts a bit of strain on the wrist. Or again, their hands have come too far forward. And so if we get all of our setup right, hands underneath the shoulders, elbows hugging in, shoulders back, um, heels pushing away all we need to do is bend the arms lower ourselves down and push back up and that works whether you're doing a wide press up or a narrow press up the narrower the hands go the further the elbows have to hug in so if my hands are shoulder width um, or narrower my elbows have to bend straight back into a tricep press up if they're wider then the elbows bend outwards. Um, again, just make sure that when you're getting your setup, as you get fatigued, you don't end up pushing yourself backwards. A lot of the time people start their press ups here and they get tired and they start to look down at their feet and then their hips come up and they end up pressing up here. It's not nearly as efficient. So remember points of contact, hips, pelvic girdle, Abs, core, keep the spine all engaged, shoulders, neck neutral, jaw relaxed, and then just go as deep as you feel comfortable. It's far better to do a strong press up here than it is to do a weak press up here. So have a play around with it, guys. Find the position that works for you, and then see um, about adding some depth to it. Um, once you've got your uh, plank and your press up strong and confident there's so many more movements you can do from there uh, including more bjj specific movements so hopefully we'll cover those soon take care bye hi everyone i hope you found the instructionals on the squat and plank and press up useful next up i want to cover a lunge a uh, very important movement uh, for a lot of strength and conditioning, a lot of rehab and prehab, and in particular anything martial arts related, because we're never stood with our two feet level. We almost always have one foot offset, so it's important to know how to control our balance and our weight in that position. So like with the other movements, we need to start by looking at our points of contact with the ground. So here it's our feet again. So weight goes in uh, the heel of our front foot, but we still want some activity through the toes, through the ball of the foot. So we spread our toes and we push down through all four corners of the foot, but ultimately our weight sits in our heel. Back foot has to be right up on the ball of the toe. Don't try and get your foot down at any point. Keep the heel lifted and really drive forward, like in the plank. Um, you don't want a sort of floppy foot. You want to be really driving yourself forward. 
and put all of your weight onto that front leg. Next, we've got our knees. Uh, so the front knee is gonna stay over our ankle. Think of the lunge not as a forward and back motion, but as a straight down motion, so that's the opposite of the squat. So we're gonna bend our back knee straight down. And as we do that, you can see my front shin doesn't actually move. My knee stays over the toe. So resist the temptation to go forward and back for more depth. That doesn't help you, it puts a lot of strain on your knee. Uh, speaking of the knee, you need to make sure that stays in a strong position, especially if you are rehabbing or trying to prevent injury. Um, like with the squat, that knee will often have a tendency to rock inwards. So just have a little look at it. It's quite easy in this position to keep an eye on where your knee goes because you can see it a lot better than in a squat. So as I bend down, I should see my knee stay stable and the rest of my body moves around it. The back knee doesn't have much of a choice as to where it goes. It bends and it drives the movement. So although your weight is in the front leg, it's the back leg that drives the movement so it helps you fold straight down. So it's sort of the opposite of a squat. With a squat, I was saying it's a backwards movement, not up and down. This is an up and down movement. In the squat, I was telling you not to think about your knees, but to think about your hips. With this one, I do want you to think about your knees, specifically bending that back knee, keeping some pressure through that back toe, and then pushing back up through the back leg to get yourself upright. Next thing to look at is our hips. Obviously our legs are split, um, but we don't want our hips to go with them. Our hips still need to be driving us in the direction we want to go in. Um, so get your headlights on the front of your hip bones. As you bend down, as you come back up, they shouldn't move anywhere. Same goes for the rest of the body. You shouldn't have any action, any movement uh, north of the hips. That applies whether you're doing a static lunge or a traveling lunge. Um, a lot of the time, all these concepts go out the window when people start moving because they want to get forward as much and as quickly as possible. You can see my knee is no longer over my heel and my body is no longer tall and straight. So if you're doing your traveling lunge, pick the knee up, plant it, and then stop the movement and go back down. So you don't have to break it down once you get confident. You can seamlessly travel and then go down. But if you're not so confident, do break it down, plant that foot, check in with the back leg, bend straight down, and then push yourself back to standing. Um, don't forget that back leg. As you do your traveling lunges, People tend to only focus on that front leg because it's stepping forward. That back leg has to pull us back. So don't just push yourself back on the front leg and hope for the best, but pull yourself back onto that back leg, staying as tall as you can the whole time. Hips facing forward, shoulders nice and relaxed. Drive through the toe, pull yourself back through the back toe. Then your whole body is moving during your lunge. We can also work side lunges and at various different angles, all the principles still apply. If I go for a side lunge, I take a nice long step, knee stays over the foot, over the heel, I sink into that leg, this time this leg has to stay straight, but the rest of my body doesn't move. I don't collapse over my lead leg, I stay nice and tall, engaging my core, and I pull back through my back leg, my trailing leg. So my knee is in a nice stable position. This whole foot is active. These toes are still working to push me back and my hips stay steady and level. Same if you're going backwards, you reach back with that foot, bend yourself down and come back up nice and tall, never folding yourself across your body to come up but always lifting your chest, engaging your core, staying nice and strong. So have a go with those in different positions. Check in with the feet, the knees, the hips. And once you've got that strong, you can build that into a really effective conditioning routine. Take care, bye. 
Hi everyone, I've got one more video for you on the foundations of uh, movement in fitness and strength conditioning, um, and that is on ab work. So the first thing to note is that your abs are unlikely to want to do any work on their own, you're going to have to make them work. So getting from A to B in any movement is uh, not as important as the actual journey that you take with your muscles. Your neck is very happy to do a lot of the work for you. Your upper back will often try and do a lot of the work for you. Uh, and certainly your hip flexors will. So it's important with any ab work that we do to make all the movements very deliberate, very controlled. You might not feel like you're getting much movement, um, but the important thing is that you are making your abs work. So the most basic uh, unit of ab training is the crunch. Um, Hopefully by now nobody is doing full sit-ups anymore. They're not particularly effective at working your abs. Um, and I'm sure many of you have done some of these types of exercise before. Uh, one of the common complaints uh, from small crunches is that the neck gets tired. Um, my answer to that is twofold. One, tell your neck to do less of the work. and Make your abs do it. If you're really focusing all of your effort on your abdominals, your neck won't need to do much. Um, secondly, if your neck gets a bit of training from this, that's okay, especially in jiu-jitsu, we are gonna spend a lot of time here. It's important for our neck to be strong in this position, but you don't want any uh, tension that's gonna linger afterwards. So you don't want to be tightening your jaw, you don't wanna be clenching your jaw, you don't wanna be pulling any faces. You wanna try and keep everything north of your rib cage completely relaxed. So I imagine, with this small, small crunch, I've got a thread that's pulling me up through the center line of my abs. You can also imagine you're trying to crack a nut with your belly button. From there, my hands just come out of the way. I rest my knuckles on my forehead. I never come all the way back down because that avoids having to do too much movement with the neck. So once I've got my neck in the right position, I've got my shoulders relaxed, I can just squeeze my own abs and hope that it lifts me up. So that's the most basic way of engaging your abs. Um, it can be useful to incorporate other parts of the body and their movements. So often you'll see the legs up. If you are gonna have your legs up, make sure you have a right angle at your hip, at your knee, and at your ankle. It's particularly useful in jiu-jitsu as well because we like to have nice strong hooks. There's no point having floppy feet. So ankles engaged, knees locked, hips at a right angle, and then none of this needs to move again. So then again, we're just concentrating on making our abs do the work. Hi everyone, hope you've enjoyed practicing your fundamental movements. Uh, now I want to show you a way that you can string them together into a little exercise routine. Um, most of the exercises I've put into this are variations on what we covered, um, but the principles all still apply. Keep uh, your points of contact strong, check in with your knees, have a look at where your hips are facing, make sure they're going the direction you want to be going in. Keep your spine nice and tall, shoulders relaxed, and breathing steady. So we're gonna start standing. We're gonna do a walkout. So we're gonna do a squat variation of a walkout. You squat down, hands down, walk yourself forward into a plank, and walk back. You're gonna do six of these. Try and vary which hand goes down and pushes you back first. And the last one, we're going to stay down in our plank and we're going to go into a restless sit-out. Ten of these. Next, back into your plank or press-up position, we're going to go into a walk-over press-up. So starting in your normal press-up position, take one hand out to the side, press at an angle, walk over, and press six of these in total. Next, back on your knees. I'm gonna go for our stand-ups. Are you standing up in someone's guard? Stepping up into a low squat and back down. Changing legs for a total of 10. Okay. 
coming all the way up into a squat and uh, standing up tall you're going to come into a squat come halfway up all the way down all the way up just six of these nice and controlled Next, we're gonna go into an alternating lunge, but out at 45 degrees. So stepping out, toes pointing forward, hips pointing forward, lunge down, step back, other side, 10 in total. Back down on your mats, on your backs, Arms up overhead, imagine you're hanging from a bar. You're gonna bring the knees up into the chest, squeeze the abs to bring your hips up off the floor. Just six of these. And then up into our crunch position, hands out by the side, parallel to the ground. Crunch up, swivel round, pinching the side, back to the middle, and back down. Lift, swivel, and down. 10 of these in total. And then back round onto our fronts for a mountain climber press up. So as you press, Knee comes up to the elbow and back up. Change sides, six of these in total. And that's one round. So should take you about three, four minutes to do. Then you can go straight into a second round or you can take a little breather, repeat as many times as you like. So I'm gonna run through that all one more time. You can do it with me, and then you're on your own. Let's go. Six walkouts. Staying down for restless sit-ups. Walk over press ups. Onto your knees for stand ups. Ten of these total. All the way up for double take squats. All the way down, halfway up, down, all the way up. Six of these. And alternating 45 degree lunges. Ten in total. Losing my balance. And then onto your back's reverse curls. And swivel crunches. Mm -hmm. 
And last one, six mountain climber press-ups. There you go, guys. Little full body circuit. You can do that on its own as many times as you'd like, or before or after a run or whatever other workout you prefer. Have fun. See you soon. So press-ups, you want to have your hands slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Um, your elbows are going to be pointing out about 45 degrees. You don't, you, don't, you don't want them to be like up here. You want them to be like sort of there because it's better for your shoulder. Um, you, want, you want to keep your chin up, your head up, so you're slightly looking forward. And obviously you want to have a flat back through it all. Um, so at the top of the movement, you should have your arms straight, like elbows extended. Um, you come down tempo of two seconds roughly, one, two, um, and then you come up on like a tempo of one. Uh, you don't really need to support. So two X two is the tempo that I will be following. Um, and you're coming down to about 90 degrees before you come back up. Um, couple of couple of like coaching points. Um, don't flare your elbows out. Keep your ass down. Um, full range of motion. Um, and keep your chin up. Um, all right, cool. So just over shoulder width apart. Um, feet back. So start fully extended. And then elbows come out of 45 degrees, you're coming down. One, two, and up on the count of one, two, one, cool. Um, planking. Um, so you want to have your arms, this is a forearm plank. So you want to have your arms shoulder width apart. Uh, you want to have your elbows directly under your shoulders because that's that's where the main point of contact is. So you want it to be look forced to be going like downwards rather than like back or back or forwards. Um, you want to keep a straight back, and your head should be neutral, not like looking up like straining, but like sort of yeah, just like neutral. Like. Um, keep your bum down. Don't forget to breathe. All right. Oh, you can't even wait. Oh, you can't wait. Wait, wait, wait. Like so. Um, all right, and then with the lunge. So your key points are your feet are hip width apart, right? Your knee doesn't touch the floor when you come forward. You should be upright with a straight spine, looking forward um, and head up. So when you're doing the movement, you want to come. You want to come down so your your um, your thigh is like parallel with the floor. <clears throat> Uh, about 90 degrees, excuse me. Um, you're going to pause at the bottom for about one, one or two seconds. And um, during this whole thing, you want to maintain the gap between your... You want to maintain the, like, hip hip width gap. You don't want to be, like, coming in and, like, having to, like, balance and, like, wah. Yeah, we're not really on that. Um, keep your head up and don't use your... Um, don't use your hands to like push, push off your thigh, because apparently that's cheating. Um, yeah. Gotta do your laces up as well. Oh. That's how you don't do a lunge actually.
Um, another coaching point, yeah. Um, like, so you're leading foot, don't bring the heel off the floor. You're meant to be putting all your force, like, through your heel. Um, yeah. Cool. First thing I'm going to show you is the traditional push up. So, hand positioning should be about just partial width apart. So, you have that nice, comfortable position. Your legs. Together and your, your feet obviously should be together as well, and your, your back should be nice and straight. So your spine is straight and. Up. Um, tempo can vary depending on what you're doing, but usually it could be three down, three up, two down, two up, or or fast down and slowly up and obviously there's different ways and different parts should be activate more but just the normal push up so I'll quickly prop you down and show you so, just not a shoulder width for part, hands flat on the ground, head looking well neutral with your spine, and as you go down and go up. So I'll show you. You know, make sure as when you go up, up, you have this full extension in your arms, so you can see your see the flex in your tricep. Then as you go down ninety degrees, and then go up, because if you don't have full extension, you'll be you won't be as activating as much. Mu your muscle and in the long term you might shorten your arm extension and stuff like that so just make sure you flex straight out and then 90 degrees back, back in the, uh, 
uh, so yeah, the tempo changes depending on what you're doing. And also, the breathing technique, I would say, taking a nice deep breath in as you're going in. As you go down, I mean, sorry. And then exit down as you go up. So you've got the nice and controlled, and then when you get exit you got to push it out. So. And then it goes if you're. Even like he might get down and just struggling to get up. So yeah, so that is the push up. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is the plank. Again, there's obviously many different ways of doing the plank. But I'll be just showing you the elbow plank, obviously, on your elbows. So, this, the key points here, again, obviously, is the structure of the plank. So you need a nice straight back, your hips are in line with your spine, and everything is just in line because you don't want your hips frosting down or your hips too far up likewise your back doesn't want to be the arching and your feet should be together well they could be far apart but just for now and obviously the elbows are on the ground. Um, with this one, the key parts that I would look out to make sure the is to see if their back is straight and their hips are not dipping or going up and head positioning is just neutral with your spine again Leaning too far forward or too far back because it could straighten your shoulders instead of working the core. But obviously, you can make it harder for yourself and activate your core more by. Tensing your grabs and squeezing your glutes. Obviously, like glutes together when you're in that nice plank position. 
uh, I'll show you quickly now the top part. down to just cushion your elbows so they don't hurt but for now I'll just be showing you on the grass so back nice and straight in line with your hips and you don't want to be too Far forward or too far back. Okay. Shoulders should be in line or just past your elbows and then squeeze and squeeze your abs. And just look down with a nice neutral position. I'll quickly show, I'll quickly go further back so you can see my hips. So for the clients, as you're watching them, you should see if they start to dip there or start to go higher, and just tell them just to maybe. Be bringing it up a little bit or bring it down a bit, depending on how they are. Um, with your fingers and your hands, they shouldn't be intertwining because if you're holding a long plank. You can start to squeeze on your fingers and you might lose circulation. So it could be just nice knuckles to knuckles or far apart, or not far apart, but like not together. So, yeah, that's the plank. 